hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Okay. We're going to read Judges chapter 6, verse 12 and verse 13. It's a serious service. Judges 6, 12 and 13. Judges 6, 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, Let's read the last, that last word. The Lord is, not the Lord will be with thee. The Lord is with thee. Thou mighty man of valor. Verse 13. Let's read up to 16. Verse 13. And Gideon said unto him, O Lord my God, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where are all his miracles? Which our fathers told us of saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has, believed, has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. Read verse 14, everybody. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my, father, my family is poor in Manasseh. I am the least in my father's house. Let's read verse 16 together. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. When the Lord is with you. When God 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 is with you. Is with you. There are five elements and dimensions that encapsulate my ministry the calling of god upon my life my messages can be broken down into five parts the way i preach if you are a person who follows a kind of preaching there are five things you will notice that i must touch five areas that i preach and the first thing that really is my focus on preaching is loving god that's one of my major assignments to let people know that no matter what they are going through they should love god that's one of the major, you know, call, callings and dimensions, cardinal dimensions that the Lord has called me. Loving God. And the second you will notice is power. I believe in power. What makes Christianity different from every other? What makes those religion and us relationship is power. We are not having a religion because a religion has no connection to the maker. It only obeys do's and don'ts. But a relationship, you can call on the maker now. Because you, are relate, you have a relationship with him, he shows up. So that also power. And the third is hope for tomorrow. Knowing that tomorrow is going to be better. And also hope for eternity. That there is life after death. And the fifth, which is very important, is destroying altars, shattering foundations, those are my five cardinals. If you hear me preach, so if you want to hear me preach, if I don't touch one, touch two, touch three, touch four, I must touch five. Now, the place where we read, the Bible said the angel of the Lord appeared unto Gideon in the midst of pain. Gideon was hiding under the wine press. And the first thing the Lord said to him, the angel said, God is with you. He didn't say God will be with you, he didn't say God is now with you. He said, God is meaning in the midst of all the pains you've been experiencing in the midst of you even hiding thinking that your life is over god is with you so that tells us that the presence of god attracts battles god with a man is trouble looking for the man when God is with you, when God is heavily seated, when you are overloaded and heavily saturated with an uncommon divine presence, then you are ready for battle. Am I speaking to somebody here? Unction propels human and satanic attention. Unction propels, communicate, attracts both human and satanic attention. When God is with you, when God is with a man, God's choice is the devil's target. Once you become the choice of God, automatically, in, invariably, you become the target 
of the devil. I like what God called Gideon when he saw Gideon. He said to Gideon, a man hiding, a boy, not even a man, hiding under the wine press. Somebody ex- exercising and practically exposing a dimension of fright that he carried. He was hiding under the wine press. He was hiding for his life. When the angel came, he thought the angel was one of the opposition and enemies who had come for an onslaught to fight and confront him. He hid himself and he called him mighty man of valor. What is valor in hiding? What is the element of valor when a man is hiding under the wine press? God said you are a mighty man of valor. As that when God spoke to him, he was a man of fear. He was a coward. But God said, no, I see valor. So God does not see you in your present state. God sees you in your final status. That is why God can say, my daughter, I love you. There is nothing you have done for him to love. He sees you in your tomorrow. God can look at you and say, my son, you are special to me. There is nothing Nothing you have done that makes you special. God does not see you in your present state. He sees you in your final status. God does not see us as raw materials. He sees us as finished product. God never sees us as raw materials. He sees us as finished product. Why would God call him a mighty man of valor? God was not seeing him hiding under the wine press. When God looks at him, God was seeing a man that would shatter nations. A man that would destroy kingdoms. Them. What God was seeing is what it will become. So you are surprised God is showing you so much love now and you feel you don't merit it. God is not seeing your errors of today. He's seeing you in a dimension that a time is going to come when you will walk with him. A time is going to come when you walk on the wings of eagles. God is seeing you in your tomorrow. He's seeing you in your future. Am I communicating now? God does not see your present state. God sees your final status. God does not see you as a raw material God sees you as a finished product the presence of God in the life of a man is what attracts battle do you know one time Jesus was his disciples while he was with them for three days he had preached back to back and hunger came hunger came even when God was with them hunger came even when Jesus was bodily personally with them but the bible says he said how shall we feed these people how can we buy bread so we can feed them how can we buy not how can we borrow how can we buy for you to buy means there was money how can we buy jesus is saying there is money with me i am not broke i am not stranded how can i buy bread how can i buy and one of the disciples said with even 200 penny water bread cannot take care of these people the bible says uh, there was a little boy who had five loaves of bread and two fishes that was hunger attracted even by divine presence god was with them yet hunger came god was with them yes scarcity came the bible says uh, and jesus was with them and what happened after the miracle there were 12 baskets left uh, and the 12 baskets each basket was given to the 12 disciples and jesus left them uh, and as they entered the boat uh, the bible says the boat began to sink why carrying 12 baskets into a boat we make a boat sink and the boat began to sink because the boat was carrying 12 men and 12 baskets and Jesus left them for a while and the Bible says as he was walking on the water they saw him check that it happened in the next chapter they saw him fear came again despite their provision despite the abundance they have seen meaning a man can carry basket of surplus and still be afraid when God leaves you for one minute you understand that your money cannot save you when God leaves you for one second you understand your money cannot preserve you somebody say when God is with me nothing survives without the presence of God in fact in Job chapter 1 verse 6 Job chapter 2 verse 7 even Satan needed God God's presence to afflict you Satan knew that even he is powerless and helpless without he needed to go into God's presence to afflict Job. Psalm 68, verse 8 said, The heavens drop and the earth skipped 
at his presence. In Psalm 139 verse 7, he said, Whither shall I flee from thy spirit? Where shall I go from your presence? You cannot. Psalm 68 verse 2, he said, As wax melt before the fire, so let the wicked melt before the presence of our God. Acts 3.19, he said, Time of refreshing shall come from the presence of God. You can never. Isaiah 63 verse 9 says there's a particular angel called the angel of his presence. You need the presence of God. Psalm 61 11. For that will show me the path of life. For in thy presence there is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand are pleasures evermore. Psalm 51 11. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not the Holy Spirit. When you get into God's presence, that is when you see how empty, how naughty you are. How empty the naughtiness of man is revealed in the presence of God. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.29 says, No flesh should glory in his presence. No wonder Moses knew, and in Exodus 33 verse 15, he said, Thy presence go not with us. Carry us not hither. It is a waste to attempt to advance life without divine presence. But what is my emphasis this morning? God was with Gideon and yet enemies were with him. Many of us have come to a point in our life because one of the one of the essence of affliction of battles is to make us doubt the existence of God's presence. The essence of affliction is to make you doubt the existence of divine presence so that tells me if god was with gideon and yet gideon went through shame and went through reproach the next time you go through battles in life never doubt god being with you because satan wants you to come to that point when you are going through battles you are going through mountains you are going through high waters and you feel that god has left you god has left you god is not with you in fact the proof that god is with you is that that presence magnets battles that presence magnets challenges that presence magnets affliction that presence magnets limitation no wonder the bible says in psalm 34 from verse 19 to 21 he said many psalm 34 19 to 21 are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord not the unrighteous the righteous but the lord delivered him out of them or he keepeth all his bones and none of them is broken evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous us shall be desolate so never you tell yourself never let the devil lie to you that because of what you are going through now God has left you because of what you are going through God has abandoned you the fact you are going through it is because God is with you and that's what is making the devil mad. Am I communicating here? If you have no God around you, why would the devil bother you? What's the business between Okada and seatbelt? If you... <laughs> if... Amen. If you don't have God, God with you. Why would the devil bother you? God's presence in your life God's presence in your life is the basis why the devil is interested in your life. Divine presence in your life is Satan's interest. He said the Lord is with you. <laughs> I'm so happy. That when God met Gideon, the first thing he said, the Lord is with you. So divine presence is the believer's identity. God does not know you as an apostle. He doesn't know you as a prophet. He doesn't know you as a teacher. He doesn't know you as anything. He knows you as one who carries his presence. The presence of God is your identity. It's your DNA. The presence of God is the identity of the beginning to somebody. When Christ was around, world we discover when he walked on the shores of the earth literally physically anytime he appears there was battle to battle confrontation to confrontation because once he shows up the enemy is angry the enemy is rebelling the enemy is uncomfortable he comes to put 
the armies of the aliens to flight. When God appeared, look at what happened in this scenario. The angel of the Lord said to Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon began to give excuse. If I'm a man of valor, why is this happening to me? The Lord didn't say anything. When he was done with all his excuse, God said, go in thy might. Go in thy might. It didn't say you will receive might. The might is already there. But your excuses are your limitation. Go in thy might. The might is there. But your excuses are your limitation. There are people, even if God appears before them now, they want to tell him their history. They are very interested. Father Lord, before you give a miracle, let me tell you my pain. If you study your Bible from verse 14, 15, 16, the Bible says, and the Lord looked upon him. Verse 14. After he narrated his excuses, and the Lord looked upon him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And the Lord looked upon him. I don't get it. In verse 12, the angel appeared to him. In verse 14, the Lord looked upon him. When the angel appeared, didn't the angel see him? Did the angel see him or not? The angel saw him. But verse 14 says, and the Lord looked upon him. When he was given excuses, the Lord looked upon him. When he was listening, all he has been through, the Lord looked upon him. to tell me about what I saw before it happened the Lord looked upon him and guess what God did not make a comment about what he said God repeated what he God earlier said go in your mind I am not interested in this thing you are saying because I knew about it before I came the Lord looked upon him there are so many of us who are bottling pains in our heart. We feel we must, we must voice it out. God say, I'm not interested. Let me talk so I can feel better. God say, I'm not interested. In fact, for me to move forward, I need to unbottle. I need to unburden my heart. And my heart is full of pain. I'm looking for who to talk to. God says, I'm not interested. What I'm interested in, there's an assignment for you. Many people are bound, have been on one spot in life because of things they refuse to let go. They are there and they are wasting their tears. Nobody listens to me. Nobody will listen to me. Did God listen to Gideon? Did God listen to Gideon? He said, No. He looked upon him to say, What are you talking about? You think I'm not aware of the pain you've been through? You think I'm not aware of your limitations? You think I'm not aware of all the troubles of your life? Many of us today need to turn our excuses to uses. You have to turn your excuses to uses. The greatest limit in a man's life is the one he puts on himself. The greatest limit a man has in life is the one he placed on himself. The Lord looked upon him. When I saw that, I paused. I paused. I said, Lord, when the angel appeared, you saw this man. Why would you look upon him? He said, because I expected him to move forward. I wasn't interested in his history. I wasn't interested in all he has been through, all the pains. I wasn't interested in the bad story. When the Bible says, forget the past. Remember not the former things. He's talking about all the things that hurt you. Many people have got to a spot as what they call a juncture and in their life where they cannot advance, they cannot progress because they are focused, they are in prison. When they talk about the, about the pain they've been through two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, you see them crying and they think they are being justified. Sir, rise up and move away from your pain. Move away from your pain. Am I communicating here? Am I communicating? Many people think that God is emotional. Sir, no, he's not. He's principled. One thing about God is that when you are crying, he doesn't come to tell you sorry. That's so painful. He never comes to tell you sorry. He just comes to tell you, uh, do this, do this, do this. Sometimes I've been in some things and I'll, 
I've been fellowship with the Lord. I expect the Lord to tell me some things that would just suit him. He said, no, prepare a crusade, go to Kebi, go to this. I said, ah, this man is not even talking about this condition. He's not aware. He doesn't want to know. He's not interested. As far as he's concerned, it is a done deal. You have already come out of it. He's seen your next level. But more of us, no, we want to talk about it. We want to talk about it. Apostle, you don't understand. In 2012, I had a miscarriage. And if you know what I went through, God is asking, do you want a child now? I lost my car 10 years ago. Anytime I'm in God's presence, I am at, do you know there are people that have carried a particular pain for years? Pain! And they expect God to advance them to the next level. And the Lord looked upon him. The Lord looked upon him. The Lord looked upon him. Gideon had divine presence, but he was sad, sad, depression, depression, can swallow instruction. Depression, depression can swallow instruction. Condition, condition can 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 overwhelm revelation. Condition can overwhelm revelation. Depression can swallow instruction. Condition can overwhelm revelation. Situation can belittle. Situation can belittle information. Situation can belittle information. When you are focused on the situation you are going through, it can belittle any information that is coming. I need you to understand child of God as bad as it appears as unpleasant as it sounds as unreasonable as it presents itself God says I should tell you that your painful past is not his concern it's your future position as unreasonable as it appears you know what Gideon said Gideon said, we heard what our father said. How God gave them plenty. How God gave them abundance. But now, we are stranded. What was happening? Then in Israel, when Israel plants, the enemies don't come. When they plant, they till the ground, they toil, they get up the weeds, they get up the weeds, they get up everything. The enemies don't come. But when it's time for harvest, the Midianites come. The Midianites wait for harvest season. When it's time for them to harvest their crops, the Midianite comes. And they Israel sees them and runs away. The Midianite goes there. Take everything they have labored for. Year in, year out. And Israel was in pain. Gideon took it personal. Gideon took it very personal. And began to express his anguish. Express his pain to the Lord. And the Lord acted like he was not interested. The Lord acted like he didn't care about it. As far as God was concerned, that's not why I'm here. Uh, Gideon was overwhelmed 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 There are people today They are walking, they are walking They are mortals walking on the face of the earth But what they are carrying in them So much pain Pain of marriage Pain of finance Pain of health Pain of environment Pain of issues Inside them All the pains are jamming together the pains are overwhelming them like and um, you know over flooded emotions is in them they are walking about for the pain of marriage the pain of bad health the pain of finance the pain of what somebody did to them the pain of what somebody is doing to them they are, they are just there it is it, overwhelming it's overwhelming and they are not they are not able to think straight you've got to be careful because if such things are not taken off your mind off your heart it's going to become a combustic, a, a tsunami, a cataclysmic, a, a volcanic, a despodemic, uh, 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 an implosion, not an explosion, an implosion that, that can never be rectified. There's a, there's a way you get overwhelmed with worries and cares and bodies. It can shut down a system in your health. It can shut down a, a system. Your health can be affected. Your BP, your blood pressure can trigger. Stroke can be initiated because you are overwhelmed. You are carrying pains. Sorry. 
Somebody say, cut it off. The only thing that the angel of God was interested in what Gideon said. He said, our fathers, not our parents, our fathers, Gideon said, oh Lord, they may take all the fruit of our labor. They may get, take all that we struggled for. They may take everything that we have ever, ever toiled for. But there is something they didn't take from me. Our fathers told us. There were things our fathers, not our parents. Our fathers, our fathers. In First Corinthians 4.15, when Paul was speaking, he said, you may have many instructors, but not many fathers. For in the gospel, have I begotten you? In Galatians 4, I think verse 19, he said, my little children, with whom I travel in bed, until Christ be formed in you. Sir, this is by no way, by no means, trying to brainwash, or trying to tell you what you need to hear or trying to condition you mentally but i'm telling you by reason of scripture i'm telling you by what i know that everyone in life needs a mentor everyone in life needs a father everyone in life needs somebody to stand even jesus needed john the baptist to introduce to announce him and elijah needs an elijah a joshua needs a moses am i speaking to somebody right now he said our father Gideon was saying I may have gone through pain and my, my family may have gone through liquidation but our fathers told us something about God about the miracles that this God has done about the move of God they saw in the past when you know what God has done it is a proof of what he can do and will do when you know what God has done it is a proof of what he will do and can do so whenever you want to see the next move of god go back and check the previous act of god when you want to see the next testimony go back and check the previous testimony when you want to see the next thing you are believing god to do for you go back and check the previous thing he has done for somebody you are believing god for a child carry your bible run through scripture and see how sarah got a baby see how rebecca got pregnant see what god did for hannah when you are looking for something new check what god has done before am i talking to somebody here gideon was crying our fathers had abundance our fathers had plenty how come we now have scarcity sir there's nothing as painful as when you have touched it before all of a sudden you don't have it again there's nothing as disastrous as when you have been in abundance before and now you are in cataclysm you are in the yoke of despondency and poverty there is nothing as painful as when you have had the previous regular and has become the present non-existent when the previous regular becomes the present non-existent there was money before sir it is better for you never to have seen money never to have seen honor never to have seen wealth i heard the story i heard the story about a man who was a landlord four flats he lived in one of the flats he became so broke that he sold the house to one of the tenants and became a tenant in the house of that person you are not getting me he was a landlord he became so broke he sold the house to pay for a loan and became a tenant in the house of his former tenant. That is what it means to our fathers told us of plenty, but now there is scarcity. When the previous regular becomes the present non-existent, when the previous regular becomes the present non-existent, when you see somebody who tell you maybe a father and mother tell you how they enjoyed abundance they enjoyed plenty but you never grew to meet up anything like plenty you grew to meet scarcity you grew to meet limitation we had two years ago three years ago four years ago you had money to play with you had money to throw around you had finances you had funds but all of a sudden as it stands now you are so broke like a chalk you are so stranded and there is nothing with you am i talking to somebody here it is painful it's better not to have seen wealth before than for a man to begin to sell all he has sell his mother his car sell his building sell his property that shall not be your portion forever oh oh you are not hearing me i said that shall not be your portion forever 
or the person that will say the loudest amen that shall not be your portion amen despite the presence of God in the life of Gideon he wallowed in battle sir don't forget the presence of God attracts battle but understanding the elements of the presence also eradicates battles the presence of God attracts battles but understanding the elements of his presence also eradicates battle the presence of God attracts battle but you understand the elements of his presence it eradicates battle am I communicating am I communicating his presence understanding the elements of his presence eradicates battles it annihilates it extricates it annuls it voids battle the Lord appeared to him thou mighty man of Allah God had to introduce Gideon to Gideon there are some of us God need to introduce us to us because with the way you are talking you don't know yourself the first battle against the divine that battles God's presence in our life is the battle of complex someone say complex God had to introduce Gideon to who? to Gideon thou mighty man because you don't know who you are how many of you know a man can have a loaded gun in his house and yet be killed by somebody who had the cutlass because he doesn't know how to put the trigger a brand new car that can't be driven is useless God had to introduce Gideon to Gideon hey sir you are a mighty man of all meaning even with divine presence if you are enveloped with complex you become a casualty even with divine presence if you are overwhelmed with complex complex you look down on yourself you talk down on yourself you are you are swallowed up by your condition you are carrying gold but living like a dog you are carrying gold but you are eating dust because you are you are full of complex it's called inferiority complex you feel you are not good enough you feel you cannot do it you feel you cannot arrive you feel you are not anytime you are filled with that the presence of god on you is rubbish it's made in consequentially in infinite estimate why because you are overwhelmed you are swallowed up complex Nothing shatters complex like courage. Do you know when God appeared to Joshua? From Joshua chapter, Joshua chapter 1, 3 to 9, God focused on talking to Joshua to build his self-confidence, to build his esteem. Say, Joshua, you have taken over from Moses. You can't go there like a lily-livered, uh, moritonic, majestic, microscopic piece of inconsequential material Joshua let me overload you to know you are from verse 3 see what the Lord began to tell Joshua Joshua 1 go back to verse 3 he said every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon I have given you to possess as I said to Moses verse 4 from the wilderness God spread it out go to verse 5 verse 5 God said there shall not any man be able to stand before the other days of their life as I was with Moses, what was God doing? Boosting his courage, charging him up. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fade thee, nor forsake thee. Verse 6 Be strong. And what? Don't look down. Joshua 2 11. Joshua 10 25. In Joshua 2 11, look at what he said. He said, As soon as we had heard these things, our heart did melt. There remain there neither did there remain courage in any man hey sir as soon as we heard these things our heart did melt neither did there remain courage in any man so what you hear can affect your courage the things you hear the th guide your ears my brother guide 
your heart is not everything you should hear. Stop looking for what's not looking for you. If it's negative, don't hear it. Oh, how do I explain this? In Philippians 4, verse 7 and verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 7. Hear what it says? And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall do what? 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 And what? Heart first. And what? What enters the heart is what works on the mind. What you allow into your heart is what you start thinking you are worried about through Jesus Christ. How do you get the peace of God? Go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. This is how you get the peace of God. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever, this is how to get the peace of God, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. God says, when you want to hear something, number one, it has to be true, it has to be honest, it has to be just, it has to be pure, it has to be lovely, it has to be good report, it has to have virtue, it has to have praise. If it doesn't have this element, take yourself from such informations. Somebody met a great man and said, I want to talk to you about your friend. I've told you the story before. I want to talk to you about your friend. Is it okay? Before you say anything, the thing you're about to tell me, is it honest? Is it true? Is it well? Is what I heard. Okay. Number two, is it positive? No, it's very bad. Number three, if I hear it, will it make me angry? Ha. <laughs> you would you will kill him. Number four, did he tell you to tell me? He said no. He said, if he doesn't have these four qualities, why do you want to tell me? If he does not have these four qualities, why do you want courage? The things you hear, the things you hear can add up boost your courage. Do you know when you keep hearing negativity, it begins to affect your complex. When you tell hearing negativity, they tell you you are not good enough. They tell you you are useless. Many of us, our parents, our parents built complex in us. Just because a child didn't do well in school, they call the child names. Olo, do, basket head. Your head, you are just like your father. When it's bad, it's always... Uh, you are behaving like your father's people you will end up like your mother you see you, you young girl you will end up your mother will say things and the child begins to grow up with that mentality with that consciousness because of the things she has heard she has been told she's not good enough so i come to tell you that's a lie of the devil you are created in the image of god you are a royal prison i don't care the nonsense you've heard over the years you are a peculiar people you are a holy nation caught from out of darkness into his marvelous light you are a child of the king you are a child of divinity nobody should tell you what you are not what they think you are is not what you are what they think you are ends in their thoughts you are too much that is why they are thinking about you you are too much that's why they are thinking i said something some years some time back i said don't be angry with your enemies don't be angry with those that gossip and criticize you it's not easy to leave your matter and carry somebody's own on your head you think it's easy you are talking about somebody you leave your matter you carry the person please it's not an easy walk if you think it's easy to gossip, why are you not gossiping? Gossip is work. That you leave your house rent issue. You leave your health issue. You sit down. You are discussing about somebody who has no time for you. Am I talking to somebody right now? Anybody that spends our energy always talking about you. Anybody who spends his energy always talking about you is missing you.
if you are my friend before we are no more friends, why can't you move on? You can't move on because you miss my friendship. Am I talking to somebody? You were in my office. You left the office. You got another job. You are still trying to close down my office. You miss my office. What people don't care about, they don't talk about. What they talk about, they care about. Am I communicating now? Am I communicating right now? There are correct booster. You you must handle complex. So even with the presence of God, Gideon was hiding under the wine press. Why? He saw himself as not good enough. He was carrying God, but he saw himself. Ah, hey, hey, hey! Don't look at me. When God appeared to him, and God, after he narrated chapter and verse thirteen, we hear what our father said. God said, "Go in this thy might." Gideon complained again. I am from a poor family. What is wrong with this boy? The first time you spoke, God didn't answer you. Didn't say anything. Verse fifteen, you repeated, "I am from a poor family. My father's house." Is poor and in my father's house I'm the least in other words I am from the least and I am the least of the least uh, so I am we are not just poor we are so poor I'm from a poor family and in that family my father is the poorest and in the poorest of my family I am the poorest of the poor so I am so poor that poor people call me poor you, you get what I'm talking about here. So, I am so stranded that stranded people say I am stranded. Uh, that is it. That, that, that's how Gideon classified himself. Watch this. He complained about himself. No, he started complaining about God. If God is with us. Number two, he complained about himself. Number three, he complained about his family. Number four, he complained about the event. Doesn't this summarize your complaint? You will sit down. If God really loves me, the way some of you talk to God, accuse God, I keep wondering between you and God, who created who? And somebody says, that he, he, He's my father. I should be able to express my pain. I should be able to say how I feel. Yes, express your pain, not your insult. Express your pain, not your arrogance. Express your pain, not your abuse. Telling the Almighty God that woke you up this morning that are you still are you real at all? The proof that your life is that is real. God ignored Gideon. You know the prayer I pray for you. Listen to this prayer, it sounds funny. Anytime foolishness is coming out of your mouth to God, may he ignore you. Anytime you are sounding so ungrateful, foolishness is come. The kind of foolishness that will make angels strike, strangle your neck. May God just ignore you. Amen. Father, if you don't do this, I'm not serving you anymore. Hey! Hey! There are 7.8 billion people on earth. Ah. 7.8 billion on earth you an entity frailty sand you are talking out of 7.8 billion telling the man that will kill you and no police will arrest him talking to a god that can squeeze your neck and nobody will ask him what he has done you are telling him i won't serve you anymore and god is looking for who is talking So we say, what, what did that one say? Is it that one that hired assassins who wanted to kill and I, and I diverted them? Is it that one that, that they poisoned? She ate it mistakenly and she's still alive? Is it that one a serpent was sent and before the serpent got to her house, I killed the serpent? Is it, is it that one that the enemy planned that the children would be killed and I preserved them? She said she would serve... She, is she aware of the things that I have done? Is he aware of the things that I have done that is not... In public view. Someone said that they have been sending you messages you are not replying. I said, except it's two messages. Number one, account number. When I say account number, my credit finish. 
I don't reply. You don't send me account number. You only send an account number when you are asked to. So it's rude to just send somebody I need money, you send an account number. It's rude. When they say send, you send. Or number two, if you send a message accusing God, I say I won't reply you. Because I have nothing to say. You are currently with the maker. How can I settle it? I've seen many like that. That I want to ask you. Is there really God? Oh, you have no idea. Am I not wasting my time being a Christian? Imagine what somebody who escaped accident is saying. Somebody who escaped food poisoning is saying. Somebody who escaped an affliction thrown overnight. See what is coming out of your mouth because of a, a temporal situation. A temporal situation. I have never in my life sat or been on a spot where I start questioning God. No! I question myself. Is there something I'm doing wrong? Not God. God cannot be wrong. I say almighty God cannot be wrong. He cannot be wrong. Question yourself. What are you doing wrong? Not what he has done wrong. I was talking to somebody, said, Papa, you know, because of that, for three years I didn't go to church. I said, Okay, continue. She now said this. He said, You didn't know what I said. For three years I didn't go to church. I said, I've heard you. What next? He said, For three years I didn't go to church. I said, I heard. What now happened? You're not even bothered I didn't go to church. I said, Wait, oh. You're going to church. Is it church you are helping or yourself? I said, I've heard what to say. What now happened after that? You are not in church. God does not miss you. And that's the truth. You are in church, you get blessed. You enjoy the presence of God. I need us to get to that point where our situation should not determine our conviction. Your situation should not determine your conviction in God. God is God even if you are broke. God is God even if your landlord is throwing your things out. God is God even if your marriage didn't work. God is God even if you had a miscarriage. God is God even if, if all hell break against you. God is God even if those you love conspire against you. God is God even if mountains rise up against you. God is still God. God is still God. God is still God. Hmm. Even God cannot use certain people once they believe in themselves. Gideon, I have an assignment on you. I have an assignment with you. I have an assignment through you. But I can't move forward until you understand you are a mighty man of Allah. Then what is slowing down your manifestation is your refusal to realize your connection. Your refusal to realize the lack of realization of your potential of who you are. God said to Gideon, before I use you, before I send you, understand that you are a mighty man of Allah. Stop living defeated. Stop living in, 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 with the definition and in the enclave of what men have said they think you are. Am I communicating? Let me give you some courage boosters that will boost your courage. Number one, Battles are proof of your importance and value. Anytime you see a battle, understand you are important. Understand you have value. Battles are proof of your importance and value. When you understand that, you will not allow the battles define your joy. Contaminate your excitement. Battles of life are proof of your importance of, and value. Your importance and value. Understand this, <laughs> child of God. Another courage booster you must know is that if you are not wasted, it means you are still needed. If the battles didn't kill you, it means there's still an assignment for your life. If you are not wasted, it means you are still needed. Gideon, you just said you all went through pain. You all went through high waters. You all went through mountains. You went through shaking. But yet... You are still alive. 
is a proof that you are needed. It's a proof that you are important. It's a proof that there's still an assignment on your life. If you are not wasted, it's a sign that you are still needed. You are still needed. You are created because you are needed. And once you are needed, you can't be wasted. You are too important to be impotent. You are too expensive to be expended. You are a child of divinity. There is something you carry. That is why despite the mountain, you are still standing. Despite the valley, you are still alive. Am I talking to somebody now? Gideon knew what the father said. The knowledge of the act of God shows you his ways. The knowledge of the act. When people don't know God, my heart bleeds. You left your house. You came to church. During praise, you are sitting. During worship, you are pressing phone. During message, you are not taking notes. During message, you have no Bible. Offering, you don't drop. Pray, you don't pray. Are you a monument? Are you a statute? Did they do you? What are you doing here? Open your mouth, talk to God. You are pressing phone. Begin to pray. You cross your leg. Rise up, let's worship God. You are just with your friend. This is not an amusement park. Why are you here? Why are you here? No hunger for knowledge. No hunger for God. Your heart is not in what you are doing. Your heart is not in your service to God. When the devil shows up, you start crying. You start crying. How much is your hair? Your head, the hair on your head. How much is your offering? If your hair is more than your offering, you are in hell. When when you spend somebody can sit down and spend thousands on hair and owe the peanut for offering. Nobody's looking for your money anyway. I'm teaching you priority. Anything I can't give God, I can't use. Anything I can't give to God, I can't use for myself. Your priority, the definition of your intimacy, it is your it is your priority that reveals your intimacy. What you place as priority is what reveals your intimacy. Am I communicating? And when I tell my pastors, I said, I say I've been. Uh, they tell me that they have traveled more than me. I say it's true. Yeah, they traveled with me. But they tell me we have traveled more than you, sir. But yeah, they traveled with me. And I say, why? I say, you when you travel from church to where you are staying, from where you are staying to church. We after church, we stroll. We look around. Is it about you? You are moved from service. I say because I, that means nothing now. I was stressed. I did that when I went to America the first time. I moved from place to place to see places. From New York, I went to Manhattan. Guess what, what time I went? 1 a.m. Yes, yes, I went there. I was looking around, seeing good places. They said, this, that celebrity, this is where he stays. I said, wow. This is how much they pay for a flat. Uh-uh. This, this. Wow. This, that. Wow. This, that. Wow. You turn to a siren. Wow, wow, wow. wow. And, and, and you know, Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you know, hold on. <laughs> you know, I did all that. I was having a service by nine. They took me around for sightseeing till almost six a.m. And my heart into New York is like forty-five minutes to an hour. So we now drove. <laughs> Who said yes, sir? You don't go. <laughs> and when I got to New York, I rested. My legs were hurting me. I slept. I was to get up by nine. I got up to eleven. Service has started. They were waiting, and the Lord asked me, "Is that what you came here for?" Is that what you came here? For? I lost interest in sightseeing. I'm not a tourist. I'm not a tourist. I lost interest. I've been to places when I see people. I say, Where is this place? Ah, are you sure you went to Paris? This is in Paris now. I said I went to preach. I didn't go to see. And there are some of you, just one, just one trip to a place, you know everywhere. One visit. 
He said, Papa, you don't understand. I'm very adventurous. One visit. You know everywhere. I've been to houses to pray for people. <laughs> I had a PA like that. I've been to us to pray for people. I've gone there more than 10 times. I still need to be led there. If he goes once with me, once, once. I said, come, what's your problem? <laughs> Papa, has there been no roads? <laughs> he will look here, he see a bank. Me, I'm looking straight. He look here, he look here, he look here, he look here, he look here. He will start the corner. Now, that's not a problem. If that's how you are, it's not a bad thing. But I'm trying to explain today that we have to get to a point where we avoid distraction. Your knowledge for God. Right connection is a courage booster. Right connection. When you are rightly connected, the information they heard from their fathers was what boosted their courage. When you, are, when you are with the wrong person, you always be discouraged. When you are with the wrong people, that can boost you up. They can boost and encourage you. They can't tell that this thing you are doing, you can do it. That person, you tell the person, there's this song I was writing. After two weeks, it comes to you, you say, Have you done, are you done with that song? You say, I'm still, I'm still trying. Say, oh, come on! Write it! That's the kind of person you should be with. Say, what about that idea? Say, I'm just tired of what? It's possible you can do it. That's the kind of person you surround yourself with. Right connection. People that stretch you to your limits. People that stretch you to your zenith. People that tell you you can make it. People that tell you you can still do it. People that tell you that there's something inside of you. There is something you carry. Sometimes when I come to this church premises and I'm looking at the building, I'm not seeing what we have done. I'm seeing what we should do that we have not done. I'm looking for places where certain things should be cited. I'm looking for places where certain things should be done. I'm looking, that is the kind of life you live. Look for those that stretch you, not those that shrink you. Go to those that stretch you, those that tell you it can be done. The right connection. Not somebody who is so petty, envious of your shoe, jealous of your hair, jealous of your cloth. That's the height of pettiness to be jealous of appearance. Appearance is making you angry. Somebody pass you and you is. Can, can't you see? Can't you see what you have in your head is ice cream, not brain? Somebody pass you and you frown. Somebody buys a car. You want to investigate the source of the car. As if you investigate his trekking. Did you investigate the source of his You are so stupid. Am I communicating here? The young, a, an, a, an elderly man dragged his younger ones to me that they were very insultive of him. That they were very insultive of him. There were six of them in their family. Three boys, three girls. He was the eldest, not doing well. All that you are doing well. The last one, he will insult that one. He will insult the second one. Money ritual. You are blood money. Every, all the siblings, he gave them names. From blood money to Yahoo. From Yahoo, this one does not have a church. She use her womb for money. He, all kinds of things. And they, they gave it back to him. He insulted him. And I was very angry to hear the insult. He was forwarding to me that they insulted him. I said, can I see everybody? I was privileged to be in Lagos. And all of them led themselves. March like Israelites. And sat down. When they began to tell me the things he said. But they showed, showed me his own messages to them. And I turned to him. He says, that's why they're insulting me. I said, don't be angry. Forgive them for insulting you. Because they were thinking you have sense. You don't have sense. I said, forgive them. They thought you have sense. You know, this is why they say my mouth is bad. Because I say it as it is. And you see, this world, we like hypocrites. The ones that are insulting privately and smile publicly. That's why I must make heaven. Because I say it as it is. I ask him, you have five siblings who are wealthy and you are suffering. Five siblings that you don't need to work for the rest of your life. Five siblings who are this blessed 
All of them came with their cars. You, the Uber you came with, you were fighting him. I had to come down to pay for you. Two five, two five, two five, two five. You say it's two three. You say it's two three. You say it's two three. You say what? You stop me outside. You didn't cross gates. I said what is? Give him money. No, 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 no. I don't like to. Number two. <laughs> Number two. Manifest that thing you are afraid of doing is what you can do. Stop the fear. That thing you are afraid of doing is what you can do. The fact that you are afraid that you can't do it is a proof that you can do it, but the devil wants you to think you can't do it. Stop the fear. Hebrews 13 from verse 5 to verse 6 to verse 7. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness. The Bible says that you should be comfortable and content with such as you have. For you have said, I will never. He said, So I will boldly say, The Lord is my. I will not know what man. The loop of Job in Job 25. The fear come upon me. First John says, First John 4 18. He said, There is no fear in love. For perfect love casteth out fear. Why? Because fear has torment. Once you have fear, you live a life of torment. That fear torments you. That fear is a barricade. It quarantines you from advancement. Sir, don't be afraid. Because the thing you are afraid of is afraid of you. Don't be afraid. The thing you are scared of is scared of you. Don't be afraid. The devil wants to quarantine, imprison you with the yoke of fear. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? The Bible says in Proverbs 29, 25, that the fear of man is a snare. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 12, the Bible says, Isaiah 8, 12, do not say a confederacy. To what these people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear. Don't fear! What are that fear? Don't fear. Don't fear. That's why the angel came. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing eradicates fear like encounter. When you see a man who is confident in the midst of ag- aggression, in the midst of onslaught, it is because <laughs> he has gotten an encounter. When a man has an encounter with God, the man, the, the, the fear diminishes from his life. Inability to take risk is on the platform of fear. Your inability to take risk is always on the platform of fear. It is because of fear you can't take risk. It's because of fear. In the world, somebody gets money, starts a business, and the business fails. He looks for money again and starts the same business. But believers, the business fails. They think that's the end of life. Not knowing it may be God building up their testimony. It may be God building up their testimony. I wish I was communicating right now. Fear is a killer. Fear. There are three, 366 times fear not was mentioned in the Bible. Don't fear. 366 times. And there are 365 days in a year. So for every day, there is a fear not. Every day, fear not. And if it's a leap year, 366, there is one for the leap year. Every day, God says, fear not. God says, fear not. Don't be afraid. No matter the pains you see, no matter the troubles of life you're experiencing, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Gideon was carrying grace. But he was leaving the enclaves of fear. Number three, the battle of family. Number one was the battle of complex. Number two, the battle of fear. Number three, the battle of family. Jeremiah 31 verse 1 tells us that God is a God of families. Jeremiah 31 verse 1. Psalm 68 verse 6, God says he set solitary in families. I like what Solomon said in Songs of Solomon 1 and verse 6. He said, look not upon me because I am black. 
Because the son has looked upon me. He said, my mother's children were angry with me. My complexion changed because of the affliction from them. What was their anger? All these things they did to me, they made me keeper of the vineyard. But my own vineyard, I did not keep. They were happy when I was investing in them. Do you know there are some ladies that will not be allowed to marry? Because the mother, the father, the siblings know if she marries, her attention will be divided. I have seen young men in 45, 48. The mother says, he can't marry. If he marries, they say, we'll spend all the money on the wife and the children. So because of that, he must not marry. And you see one of the problems most mother-in-laws and father-in-laws have is assumption. Many daughter-in-laws have been persecuted because the so-called family think there's so much money she's eating. And she's in that family, she's looking for which money am I eating? Assumption. Sir, draw... Can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I talk to you? All the married men, raise your hand. Married men. Married men. Raise your hand. I didn't say roommates. Married men, raise your hand. Can I advise you? Can I give you counsel? Yes, sir. When you spot, you see, some, when I say things like this, people feel. What kind of pastor is this one? Now, I do not pretend I will tell you the truth. When you spot in your family people that hate your wife, please keep your wife far from them. If you see people that hate your husband, keep your husband far from them. Stop this braggart life. Nothing can happen. I like what mama said. He said, as much as we are praying against all these kidnappers, be careful of where you send your children to. There's a part to play. Your father does not like your husband. Yet you are always, you are always handing over the phone to your husband. Hold on for daddy. To say what? To say what now? And the first thing the man says, he said, hey. I'm looking at you. Say you are proud. You don't want to come and see me. Your husband gets angry throughout that day. Your mother doesn't like your wife. You have tried. It's not working. Yet you keep sending her and the children there for Christmas. To go and die. We are hypocrites oh, in Africa. We are hypocrites. Am I communicating? Can I ask you a question? You see, there are some people you just have to stay off. God and Satan can settle. Love them from afar. Pray for them to change and wait for them to change. Wait! Let them change. Let somebody testify of their change. Let their Christianity be evident before you show up. Wait now, let me shock you. Jesus. 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 Jesus Christi. Organanoge. Oshinegba. Chineke. In his infancy stage. Still as a child, the angel appeared to Joseph. Take this child and run. Jesus, son of God, Matthew chapter 2. Take the child and run. You are not son of God. You are not son of God. And you think there are people you should not run from? He said, carry this child and run. Until I bring you word again. When Herod died. They take the child now and return. For they are dead that seek his life. Family! Let me tell you something. God said to Gideon, 
pull down your father's altar. After Gideon pulled out the father's altar, God said, now, raise up an altar. Let me tell you why most family deliverance end up in family disaster. They will carry somebody from Lagos, straight to one village. In Mbise, Mbatoli. Or they carry somebody from Abuja, straight to the exteriors of some Morika. They carry the person, the man there. The man do deliverance. He pray, 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 pray. He anoints everywhere. When he's going, all the family that came from Abuja contribute or transport. Give him, he leaves. The problem increases. This is I talk with the family deliverance. Sir, you pull down an altar. You did not erect another altar. You pull down altar, raise. Go to verse 25 and 26. You see how God said, Pull down this altar, raise another one. Pull down that altar. All of you, six, five, seven, eight, two, three, walk to a place. Even if it's a pastor, say, This is a jazz band we are buying for this church in the village. This is a keyboard, this is a pulpit. We are buying for this church. It's our altar to be speaking in the village. That so long you are ministering from this altar, it swallows every altar that we have put down. So long this drum, how much is just banned that all of you can't gather money? So long this drum is what is being played. So long this block, this cement is what we are adding to the building going on. Let it be a new altar we have established as a family. Many have done family deliverance more than 10 times. In fact, it has become a, a, a ritual every December. Every December, they are going to the East. Hello? Chinedu Kebino. Kebino. Ah, ah. We are going for deliverance again. It's not a ritual. 16 years, nothing is improving. Sir, if you clear the grass and you are not careful how you handle the land, the grass will grow. Rest! Be on your feet. Be on your feet. Rest! An altar. Raise an altar. Rest! An altar. Raise an altar. Stop all these family deliverances that you have been done and yet altars are not raised. When an evil spirit is cast out of a man, he wandered through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says to himself, I will go to my house. And when he gets there, he meets the place empty. He says, I will get seven more spirits. And he comes back to that house and the worst, the last state of that man. Then go at it, Matthew 12, 45. Then go at it and take it with him, with himself. Seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. In other words, the reason you were delivered before was the previous spirit was not wicked enough. <laughs> so this time, more wicked. more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first even so shall it be to this wicked generation that we do not raise altars now how many of you have carried out family deliverance in your hometown your village your family house you've done family deliverance before in your family house you've gathered family raise your hand put it down Honest, we are in God's presence. How many of you notice, even after that, the same symptoms, the same battles continue? It's not because God didn't hear your prayers, because principles were not followed. Raise an altar. When battles come up against me, the reason I'm not bothered is because I've raised many altars. Many altars, multiple altars. Raise an altar. What is in this church, for example, that you single handedly did? Nobody did this thing with you. This chair, 
One. You bought it. One. What is in the house of God? Any church anywhere? Can I say this to you? Can I say this? Whether it's Omega or not Omega, whether it's OFM or not OFM, if there is a church in your village that is a prayer church, a Bible believing church, invest there. If OFM is in your location, praise God. If you want OFM there, I told you in the, in the church, I said, let us know. We will come there and put a branch there. In your village, just tell Papa, there's no FM in my village, I want OFM there. We'll find out who is the state pastor, we'll come there. We'll cover the whole place. But if there's no FM there, so long as a Bible-believing church, even if it's 10,000, check what they are doing. Even if it is chair on the pastor's altar. Even if it's a rock. Even if it's to put a pastor on 1,000 every month. Say, sir, every month, just send me, I will transfer 1,000 to you. Every month. Let, let, when the devil from that village rises up, he discovers something is coming from you to service him. Men of the supernatural are not supernormal men. They are normal men with abnormal principles. Normal men, there's there are principles they know. You don't know those principles. So they appear like supernormal men, paranormal men. There's a pastor in your village that believes in prayer. He comes to your house, you leave him at the gate. You ignore him. He comes anytime you're around from the village. He comes, ah, hi, city. Say, please wait outside. You are looking at his wretchedness. Not knowing that is the one who is staying in that village to, to be the, the priest that covers your family. To despise him is to despise a protection. Am I communicating here? I told somebody, I said, why are you so interested in me? Why is it that it's about me? You are ready to go all out. He said, I live abroad. I'm born in Aochi. I'm the son of the soil. I live there. I sleep. Sometimes I, I don't even pray much. Because I know there is a gatekeeper. He said, so when anything is happening, I am worried that hey, I will soon be exposed. I will soup you under attack. That is why I fight. I say, oh, really? He say, yes. The problem is that you are not smart. Can you hear that a pastor in your village who you know is a true man of God? You hear he's hungry. You hear he's stranded. You can't send a bag of rice to him. You can't send a bag of rice. You can't send two bags of yam. Why? Because you say he's not your pastor. Is not your pastor. There's a role he's playing. If you think it's easy to confront the demons in that village, relocate. Relocate. Katalia Tabash. Am I, am I teaching you wisdom? Am I teaching you wisdom? Am I teaching you wisdom? My mother is from a particular part of this state. There's a young man who is at the church in that place, himself and the wife. When I saw them, I said, come and see me. They came. I asked the wife, I said, what do you want to do? She told me, say, business. I gave her money. I said, what do you want? He said, this, this, this. there's one cheap car I saw for 600,000. This is a 600,000 naira car. It's a coffee. It's not a car. He mentioned another one that was like a million. I gave him. I bought it. He said, why are you doing this for us? I said, you know the pastor in that time? My mother, they said, yes. I said, I know what I'm doing. You don't know. From my father's side, I'm on ground. My mother's side, hold on for me.
Hallelujah. I said, hold on, hold that side. He said, okay. I said, of course. I'm not doing it because I'm stupid. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. We don't dash money. We plant seeds. Hallelujah. Even IMF, Interna- International Monetary Fund, does not dash money. They give loan. We don't dash money. We plant seeds. And the seed speaks for us. Your problem is that you have money, but you don't know how to use it. 100,000 in your hand. You don't pay tax. You don't pay nothing. You don't raise altar. Boom. You spend everything on drug. You even borrowed on top. And you give pastor work to pray. And you accuse God also on top. There's a right way to use money. I'm not saying give me. I'm not saying give me. Hello. I'm teaching you a principle that go and apply it. And watch your life in two months, in three months, in four months. You understand why men shine. There's a realm in God. That was the realm Moses entered. In that realm, everybody is bright. In that realm, everybody glows. In that realm, everybody is bright. Everybody shine. When Moses entered that realm for only 40 days, he contacted that glowing nature. When he came out, they could not look at his face. That's the realm in God. He only entered that realm for 40 days. He came out. His body was transmogrified. Imagine if he was, he was in that realm for one year. No man could have come close to him. When he came out, nobody could behold him. There's a realm in God where people glow. The glory, the brightness of his glory cannot be comprehended. Am I communicating? When God is with you, I want to pray for you. But first of all, I want to tell you something. And I want everybody to listen. You are not what people say. You are not the names people call you. You are not the name that that man, that woman has called you. You are not useless. You are not empty. That's what I came to tell you. You are believing in the bondage of what people call you. The bondage of all the gossip and all the, all the statements being made about you. That's not you. You are special. I say you are special. You are in the image of God. In the likeness of God. You are a child of the king. A royal priesthood. You are royalty. I beg you if you are a man, add prince to your name. If you are a woman, add princess to your name. You are the child of a king. Don't just answer your name like that. My name is Prince Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Hallelujah. Oh, My wife is Princess Dr. Lizzie Johnson Suleiman. You are the child of a king. You are not a non-entity. Oh. Am I talking to somebody here? Add Prince to your name. You are royalty. You are the child of a king. You represent a kingdom. How many of you know the Nigerian ambassador to America, to London, to Finland, to UK, to France? He enjoys a level of immunity. He's given a diplomatic passport. Yes, an ambassador carries a diplomatic passport. Not just carry a diplomatic passport, an ambassador is called Your Excellency. They call him Your Excellency. Once he carries that passport, he does not need a visa. He enters, travels anywhere, enters anywhere. He's representing that country. If you get to his office, if he's an ambassador to America, if you get to his office in America, outside the office is the Nigerian flag. He's treated like a president. When you see an ambassador, they say ambassador to so so so. Is 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 the face, is the image of that country. He's honored. Is in that country representing the country it came from. You, you are in heaven. You came to this world representing a government. The problem with you, eh? You don't know who you are. Say to yourself, I'm not an individual. I'm not an individual. 
I am a government. I am a government. See, I'm not an individual. I'm not an individual. I am a government. I am a government. How many of you know that no single person can bring down a government? You can't bring down a government. They have everything at their disposal. I want to pray for you. But before I pray that prayer, this is what God says I should tell you, and I'm telling you, you are not what people say. Don't abuse people. Don't. But they call you names. Either via messages, via verbally, look at you. Idiot. Just reply, I reject it. Don't abuse. I reject it. I reject it. That's not you. You are what the Bible says. You are what the Bible says. You are what the word of God says. You are what scripture says. Somebody say, I know who I am. I know who I am. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. We're going to pray against fear and then we'll settle down for 10 minutes to pray against family arrows and family altars. And after family altars, we're going to raise a new altar. Are you ready? Are you ready? Say, my father, my father. My, my father, father, my father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray, as I begin to pray. every element of fear, every every element of fear. In, my life, in my life, die from the root. Die from the root. your mouth and fire prayers. This second prayer is a final prayer and is very profound. When I say fire prayer, I shall pray, you are clapping your hands. Because the Bible says the battle of a warrior is with confusion. Isaiah chapter 9, 5 and 6. Garments rolled in blood, 
So this shall be everlasting bonding with fire of fire. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. So before the child was born, there was the battle of a warrior. Am I communicating? Lift your right hand of fire. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. father, my father. As I begin to pray. As as I begin begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every family altar. Every family altar. Family contention. Family contention. Family battle. Family battle. Holding down me and my siblings. Holding down me and my siblings. As I pray. As I pray. As I pray. As I pray. As Open your mouth and fire Look at the other. 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 Look at the
Sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare them free. Amen. Your brother, your sister, that has been held bound by the wicked ones, that has been rising and falling, that has not seen opportunity in life, that have been going through hardship. But I struggle without achievement. I decree they are free. <laughs> May their yoke be destroyed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> what is your own battle? Specifically, there are several mountains in the life of a man, but there's always a major mountain. Open your mouth and tell the Lord about it. Marriage, health, finances. Whatever it is, tell Jesus. Tell Jesus. Tell Jesus. Tell Jesus. Tell him. Oh. Draw me close to you. Hallelujah. Let me go. Oh, I lay it all down again. To ya, you say. To ya, you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. You are my desire.
Jesus name thank you father your family is free your own prayers are answered in Jesus name clap your hands for the Lord take your seat Holy Spirit of God Spirit of God Spirit of God Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? There is something in your body This is a deadly thing It has been there for years eh? and, and I want to pray for you This is something that they thought they did before They did what I see is something that they say they did before and they thought they felt that after doing that everything will be okay but it's not okay are you following me sir that's what the Holy Spirit is showing me that there's something in your body there's something they did before in your body oppression what are, what are you doing but the thing is that the thing can I explore what I see who are you the son the son in this body they saw something on one side they felt they operated it the other side now the same thing they saw on the first side is now on the second side is it true sir it makes, it makes, me, it makes me weak drill my bro it drain your blood. Drain my blood. I may be 35 percent today. By next tomorrow, 22 percent. Then later, I will be using a, 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 a drugs. Then I will get up to 20 something again. Then I now went to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, I was asked to come back on Tuesday. I was I was in a. You asked to come back where? On Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. I was in FMC Lokogia for almost a period of times. I'm not myself. Thank you, Father. God revealed to redeem. What God revealed is redeem. The right hand of God is power. My right hand of God is power. Anything you have not planted in this body, come out! Amen. free. I'm seeing a lady around you. Is this your wife? No, not you. There's a problem. Please, let her pray for her family. Let her pray for her family. Let her pray for her family. The power to keep home. The Lord will deliver all of them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wait for me. Wait for me. I prove to you. There's a picture that I'm seeing. There's a picture. There's a picture. I'm seeing the photograph. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Bible says we will not sow and another reap. He said, This is your problem. How can you labor? And when it's time for you to enjoy somebody else, this has followed this is where again. When you, you are doing labor, even now again in, in marriage, somebody wants to read what you have sown. But in the name of Jesus, as I pray with you today, all your lost opportunities, your lost efforts in life, restore. Pick her up. Which one? Who is 
Aigbedion. I'm seeing the persons. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing pictures, pictures, pictures. I don't know whether you have something to do with photo. It's you. Hallelujah. What's your name? What do you do? What do you do? You are a photographer. Come here. Hallelujah. Stand up. Every arrow that my father has not planted in your body, whatever God has not planted in your body, sir, I'm, I saw an attack on you. You are not well. You are what? You are from where? You are from where? I came from hospital. You came from hospital? Yes, JMG. Hallelujah. Listen, what I saw in the realm of the spirit is that they want to make you mad. What I show you? I did operation for head. You did operation on your head. They say next tomorrow I will still do this. I don't want to do They say next tomorrow you do yes, this. I will still do this anyway. I'm still in the hospital. They say I should come. Calm down, calm down. I don't did, did you did you tell me? No, no. Did you no, tell anybody? No. Okay. You say you did on this side. This side. On Saturday, last week, last two weeks. Ago. Remove your hand. We can see it. They remove they lose it yesterday. They lose it yesterday. Yesterday. So they now said you do here again. Do this one again. On this side. No, this other what side. I saw is that they want to make you mad. If you attempt to open this place, your brain will never be normal. You, t- you said what? I told the doctor. James, told the doctor. I said I will not don't mention the hospital. I said I will not do it again. That you will not do it again. I will not do this Please don't do it. I will do it. Don't do it. God are in me. God have settled my case. As I Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He has been my prayer. Even be shh, shh, shh. quiet. He said, I've never seen you before. You have never seen me before. No. Even before the operation, I came to the altar to pray. I did the operation of Friday, and on Thursday I was in the altar to work. Who did you did you discuss this problem with anybody? No, with any, no, no, no. And I told God, you told this, God, I told God this morning. I said, if I can see a post, my problem is solved. If I can just see you for my, you can see Jesus. If I can, Hallelujah. It's your brother. Yes. Listen, let me let me tell you something. I'm seeing the spirit, sir. Do you know I say you should not do another operation? Let me tell you something now. I don't know if you know, but let me tell you something. That operation they did on you, eh? This corner is on fire. It's, eh? Yes. Now. Now. It's on fire. It's As hot. Set fire. And even the operation say, I'm still feeling it. The hotness. And they want to do a second one. Kneel down. Let me pray. You say what? I say I'm free. You are what? I am free today. No problem. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I like his face. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are Jehovah Rofeka, Jehovah the doctor. Make him whole. Amen. Whatever you have not planted in his body, from his head to his toes, I command it disappear. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. You are free. Hallelujah. It's over. Stand up. The loss of the battle is over. You will not be a widow. That's the message. What is that? Are you together? Come out. You know, listen, the Holy Spirit told me two weeks ago, sit down, sit down, sit down, please sit down. Two weeks ago, the Holy Spirit told me, when you finish preaching, settle down to prophesy. Amen. 
say do not rush settle down and I say I want to give you message for people so don't be in a hurry so that's why I, if you watch last Sunday I settle down this Sunday I settle down so I'm, I'm not promising you I'm not promising you that we are going to close very early because I may come there I may come there I may come show me what is giving you concern listen how are you come this way put the phone down put the phone can I pray for you you know as I was looking at you I saw a short vision that's why I came to you short vision look at the vision I saw the vision I saw very short it just came left came left so I was looking at you I was I passed I turned and looked again I passed I saw you please it's your enemy not you flash like that I just saw you take off your clothes I just saw you remove your clothes you are walking you just remove your like somebody who doesn't who doesn't know what the person is doing like somebody who eh, like insanity you just remove clothes I just walking on you I turn I look at you I saw you sitting on the chair you are wearing your clothes I look again I turn I saw you remove your clothes spirit of madness your what put the mic uh, my, my mother and her younger sister uh, they, they run mad so my uncle from US now, asked me to carry them to the hospital to Bini wait I'm wait to calm down talk now my mother who gave birth to me who gave birth to you yes and her younger sister uh-huh. have run mad they are mad now Abba, in, in the village so okay. when I traveled in January I what village? I, Igode Igode when I went in January, I saw the sight of my mother's younger sister. I said, they crying. I took her photos. I sent to my uncle in U.S. I look at her sister. He said, I should please assist him to go and take them from the village to the hospital on Monday. That's why I came to Edo State. I'm from Kaduna. So, you came now because you were sent to go and bring them? Take them to Nuro. To the uh, hospital. Yes, psychiatric hospital in Bini. Psychiatric? Yes, sir. That's why you came? Yes, sir. So, you can take them? Yes, sir. To psychiatric. I must to go? Hey. Don't thank me, thank Jesus. Don't if you go, it will not be two people they will carry to psychiatry, it will be three. Your uncle means well. Your uncle means well. He means well. He's not a bad person. He means well. But sister, you are not spiritually. Mm-mm. This thing you cannot undo it. Mm. So I will pray with you. And whoever has anointing oil will give to me. I will pray on the oil. You will anoint your mother and the sister. That's the end of the madness. Please, who can please, 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 who can spare oil? Who can borrow us? Loan. Oh, open it. You said they're in the village. Ah, you didn't hear what I said. I said I will bless the oil. You will send it to the village. That's all. They will anoint them. They'll be okay. Must you go? Why are you why are you talking village village? Is it calling you? They know they sell. They know they sell some through two way bill. Yes. So why, 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 why is your interest? Eh? No, go, don't go. Sorry, my my PG English. I'm sorry. <laughs> eh? What you say, village, village? What, 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 what is your, what's your interest? Don't go. You're not going. Ma? From here, you are going back to Kaduna. It doesn't matter. Go be where to where you came from. Send the oil there. Make sure you it get there. Tell them to touch your mother's head with it. Touch the sister's head with it. Then listen to what will happen. (laughs) 
Nobody will call you into disaster. Nobody will call, nobody will call your family into disaster. That phone call, that phone call, that message that will manipulate you to enter and carry people's problems. I cancel it. I cancel it. I cancel it. Somebody say cancel. Say cancel. Say cancel. Father, we hand this over to you. We decree grace, glory, anointing, and power. Let madness go. Let the arrow of insanity go. Jesus' name. There's an assignment of God for you. I saw you leading. But there's a problem. And God wants to end it. You will gather, scatter. You will gather, scatter. You will gather, it will scatter. And you know, at, you are even asking yourself, am I sure I'm doing the right thing? Can I pray with you? I'm seeing a father, your father in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing a battle he had concerning land. This is land. Battle of land. I'm talking of your father biological father, battle of land and a course was issued let me pray the Lord said to tell you he is going to cancel the, the errors of your father and all your wasted years be restored how are you sir? bless you can you stand up? I just had a word from God. Say congratulations. God said to tell you congratulations. Your waiting has ended. Your waiting has ended. Your waiting is over. Wait for me. Do you believe? change a man's story change from hardship from shame from frustration you believe sir do you believe do you believe let me can I be direct to you can I be very direct As I'm talking to you now, you don't feel like a man. Because this is the woman in the house. This is a woman in the house. It's like she's doing what a man should do. You don't understand me? You don't understand me? It's like the woman is now the man. Because of everything that you have, the enemy took them. Depths. I want to pray for you. You will bounce back. Do you know you have met big people? Top men. They will be doing function. They will invite you. These are big men. Money entered your hand. You touch money. Eh? You open something for this woman. You open something for her. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm seeing drugs. Yes, sir. Drugs. Yes. Chemist. Chemist. You open chemist for her. Yes. Now, this is so much, but now there's nothing. You don't have anything on you. No camera, even. You don't have a camera. Yes, sir. Where's the camera? You sold it. You sold it. Are you a believer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are a believer? Yes, sir. Where do you worship? Christ and Boss. Christ and Boss. How much was the camera you sold? 2140. Huh? 140. I'll give you money. Buy another camera. Yes, because now I'm seeing one, two, three, four people. I'm seeing them saying, 
come now because you are good when it comes to picture it's like a gift you, they, people like your work and now they are saying yeah, come and take us picture now to so even pick call and tell them I don't get camera again you can't even tell them is it true sir, eh? true, sir. they don't know why you are not answering them because you don't know how to tell them I don't have camera so go and meet somebody now has camera to say you are ashamed because these are people that were looking up to you before where is pastor give me 140 give me 150 actually please buy a camera I'll pray for you and today 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 the God of heaven the God of heaven the God of heaven the God of heaven he will answer your prayers today 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 sir hello sir take get a camera i pray for you recover your wasted years recover recover jesus name clap your hands for jesus i want to come here ma oh oh hello sir hello sir hello sir excuse me sir this um, mama here said that spirit says she should support Obey your spirit now. Obey your spirit. Obey your spirit. Oh. Obey your spirit. Mommy, come, come. Your health is up and down. Your health, your health is up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Come. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Anywhere I have been summoned, wherever they took my name to, for evil, today, cancel, cancel, cancel. Turn it to prayer now. Turn it to prayer. Anywhere they took my name to. not in us you cannot do not in us you cannot master Just touching the hands of brothers. Remain standing here, sir. 
In three days, my God said the conspiracy. Where they took your name to? Eh? All of them that took it there in three days. There will be a confession. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Can I pray? All of you are suffering the same thing. Yes. All of you, yourself, your sister, same thing. Yes. Can I pray for you? Listen, today is the end of it. Yes. Jesus' name. You are a member here? Are you a member here? For how long? What? Mama anoint you now. Hmm? This thing that they are fired. Anoint this side to this side. Wait, before they anoint you, I saw a woman. I don't know what you are dragging with her. She sends stroke. Are you following me? What's happening here? What are you feeling? I feel it pains over here. Over here. Over here. You are feeling pain over here. Oh, this hand and this leg. It's stroke. For themselves. Somebody say themselves. Themselves. I'm wasting your time. No. I'm not in the hurry. If you are tired, you can go home. People have problem. We have to attend to it. People have problem. So that's why there's church. We have to attend to the problem. And so there's no rushing. Anytime we close. See, eh? There's something the Bible says, and I want you to hold it very firm. He says it's a righteous thing. It's a righteous thing. That when God when God sends when God sends the, the arrows that were fired at you back to the sender, God is doing righteous. He says a righteous thing for God to recompense. Recompense means to repay. It's recompense means back to it's a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. As we anoint her, any one of you who they have fired arrow on your health, oh. I command that arrow, go back to sender. Hey, Amen. Anoint her. Anoint her. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You may have to touch the legs. Anoint her. I've just been told somebody watching us in America in Rhode Island. Where is that, brother? Somebody in Rhode Island watching America is giving you 50,000. Hallelujah. Pastor Roger is giving. Bless you. Bless you. You are free. Who are these ones? Oh. That's your mom. Bless you, man. Bless you, man. Wait for me. Thank you, Father. I saw a charm in somebody's bag. Listen, I'm not saying sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm seeing, hold on, man. I'm seeing a charm with somebody. I don't know what it's meant for, whether you were planning to throw it away, whether you were planning, I don't know, but I'm seeing a charm. Right now, I'm seeing somebody with a charm. I don't know what the charm is for. Please, if you are the person, let me pray for you. I'm seeing somebody with a charm. <laughs> don't 
Be careful because this is serious. God wants to set you free and deliver you. But I'm seeing somebody with a charm. A charm. A charm. There's a charm with you. Please come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. I won't repeat myself. Is it the one? Is this how you clap for Jesus? Hallelujah. Your name, I'm seeing a light skinned girl, light skinned. You are not dark, you are not dark like that. Your name is precious. Your mother is Clara. Hallelujah. Where is it? Where is it? For what? Protection, sir. Protection. You brought it to church. No, I want to surrender my life to Christ. You want to surrender your life to Christ. That's why you brought it. Who who told you to bring it? You I mean, did you just feel like eh? I made up my mind. You made up your mind. Yes, sir. How did I know you have charm with you? It was the spirit of God, sir. It was what? It was led by the spirit of God, sir. By the spirit of God. So they gave you this for protection. Raise those things. It's your own. Raise it. I can't bend up. No, no, this one. Turn, turn. What does this? What does this mean? What does this thing mean? This for also for protection, sir. I know. All this is the root. What do they mean? It was root. It was given by me by Baba. Hey, Baba. Yes, sir. Where is Baba? Bayasa. Bayasa. We are in Bayasa. In Agua. In Agua. Where you go? ADP. Guinea pig. ADP. ADP. Yes. You paid him? No, he dash me, sir. He dash you the charm. He dash you the charm. May they not dash you bad thing. May they not dash you bad thing. There's no power here. There are powerless power. If only you understand that it is because you believe that it can affect you, that's when it will affect you. There's no power in charm. So you want to surrender your life to Christ. Are you ready? Yes, sir. But why would you why would you carry a charm? Is this the only charm he gave you? See, see, let me tell you something, eh? If you lie to me, look at me. If you lie to me, you are not lying to me, you are lying to God. Eh? Because as I'm seeing you now, the Lord is showing me. I'm not seeing only this charm. What, why are you doing your shirt? No, it's some marks in my body. He put in your body? Yes. Also? Is that all? Yes, sir. Is that all? Yes, sir. Is that all? Yes, sir. See, eh? you are in the house of God. Is that all the charm? Yes, sir. This is all he gave you. Is this all he gave you? Yes. He gave me some, but before I made up my mind, I gave out some to my friends. There are some others. In Bayasa. In Bayasa. Yes. Oh. Hallelujah. Every good thing that is who you are. Father, anything that you have not planned. Come out! Amen. Pick him up. Your body disappear. Go! You are free. Amen. You are free. 
clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. You are here. You are here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your name is Momo Osaro. Momo Osaro. Osaro Momo. It's you? Come in. I saw somebody around this place. You woke up. You slept and woke up and your body changed. Where are you? You slept, you woke up, your body changed. I'm seeing the person around this area. You slept, is it you? Come. You are God and God alone. You're not a man. garments covering you. But right now as I lay my hands on you, it's going to be rolled away. Jesus' name. Out! 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 The mighty name of Jesus. She's free. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is saying a lady just lost a child mysteriously. A lady just lost a child. What happened to him? Come with him. Come with him. A lady just. A lady just lost a child mysteriously. Mysteriously. Please come. A child. There's a child that just something happened mysteriously to that child. Where are you? Something happened mysteriously. If you are the man or you are the woman, come out. Something happened mysteriously to a child. Where is your wife? Your wife. There's a child that died mysteriously. Come. Kneel down. Lift your hands, everybody. Say, Father. 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 Those who meant to cause me tears. Those who meant to cause me tears. May they cry my cry. May they cry my cry. Those who meant to cause me pain. Those who meant to cause me pain. May they feel my pain. May they feel my pain. Turn it to prayer now. Shako sabati lo shata. Rato savivi atatayala. Rateko sapata. No so pakatila tata. So karata Jesus name. If you are holding a medical report, you have a report given to you by the doctor. Can I see it? Raise it up, anyone who has a report. Come, come, come. Come. Anybody else? Sir? Is there a report? Come, stand up with it. Raise it, raise it, raise it. Raise it, raise it. Hold it. Your father is unconscious. Wait, hold it. Your father is unconscious. Unconscious. 
Where is it? In the vehicle outside. Wait, it's in the vehicle. Can you can calm down? You want to see miracle now? Keep this, hold this for you. Who are you to me? My brother, my so brother. brother yes. The person is your father too. Yes, sir. You want to see miracle? Yes, sir. Father, as this touch him, come back to consciousness. Amen. As this touch him, free. Amen. You cannot be unconscious. And this, the man to touch you, the handkerchief touch you. Acts 19, 12. From 11, say, God, this special miracle through the hands of Paul, that handkerchief and aprons were taken from him, and devils left. Go and put this on him. He's outside the gate. Within the combat, Ted, put this on him. Now, are you afraid? Follow him. Put that on him, say in the name of Jesus, and call on my God. Let's see what he will do. Hallelujah. Father, all these ones and every devil of hell. Can I get one or two pastors? One or two pastors. Um, Pastor Gabriel, Pastor Prosper, come. They said the man is unconscious. No unconscious me. You know what means to be unconscious? That's half dead. Right? Lifeless. Not here. Give me your hands. In Jesus. Go outside there. As soon as he puts the mantle on the man, command the man to open his eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you. No, at least don't walk fast. In fact, before you get there, it may happen. Before you get there. Can, can the camera get there? Before you get there, it may happen. Because you are walking too slow. This fine God. I cancel this. All of you. Healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. All of you. Heal in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare you free. Amen. You all are free. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Can we pray? Can we pray? In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Jesus. My place in life. My place in life. My place in destiny. My place in destiny. I didn't hear you say my place in destiny. My place in destiny. No one can take it. No one, one can, can take it. it. I will not miss my place in life. I will not miss my place in life. I will not miss my place in destiny. I will not miss my place in destiny. Turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Right now, 
right here you are do you know why i didn't learn on you is because this last set i'm going to mention now you are part of it so you just wait right here you are you are saying apostle i want to make a decision for jesus i want to have a relationship with jesus i'm tired of living life by myself i want to surrender my life to christ if you're in that category can i see your right hand up you want to hand over your life to christ please come come here come and meet me come here come clap for them as they come you want to surrender your life to christ come come Come. Keep clapping. 